a moment captured in a dramatic photograph. Indira Gandhi's political ambitions were matched only by her instinct for survival and an incident of a caste conflict in Belchi, a remote village in Bihar, in July 1977, acted as a perfect moment for her to demonstrate her acumen and charisma. With the Janata Party in turmoil, riddled with internal battles, it is from here that Indira rode back to power. She was hounded by her adversaries and even jailed by them, but she chose her moves carefully. Two and a half years after Indira Gandhi stepped down as Prime Minister, she returned stronger than ever. But how did her time in the political wilderness and the wrath of her rivals shape Indira Gandhi's new avatar? After the spectacular fall of the Janata Party government in July 1979, Indira Gandhi made a stunning comeback in January the next year. During the two and a half years when the Janata Party was in power, she survived a political witch hunt which saw her arrested twice, jailed once and expelled from the Lok Sabha. Although nervous and insecure, Indira found her political moorings once more. And as the Morarji Desai-led government self-destructed, she resurrected her political fortunes. Indira kept a low profile and waited for the right moment to make her political move. She made her first big move in July 1977. In a village called Belchi in Bihar, a group of landowners had massacred 11 people, mostly Dalits. It took several days for the news to reach Delhi. The faction led by Charan Singh represented backward castes in North India who had gained a fair amount of political clout by the 1970s. Indira's support base, on the other hand, consisted of upper castes, Dalits and Muslims. Although the Dalits had largely voted against her during the Janata wave, they still had a special place in their hearts for Indira and her father Jawaharlal Nehru. Belchi was a remote village cut off from the outside world during the monsoon. Indira rode into Belchi in dramatic style on an elephant back at sunset. The local Dalits rushed to catch a glimpse of her and be comforted by her. Instantly, she struck a chord. In that moment, Indira knew that the Dalits would return to the Congress. After the success of her Belchi visit, Indira visited Rai Bareli, her constituency, which had earlier rejected her. She was overwhelmed by people's response. Indira Gandhi's visible popularity alarmed the Janata Party. People seemed to have forgiven and forgotten the excesses she had committed during the emergency, only months after voting her out of power. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Home Minister Charan Singh was determined to hold her accountable for the emergency and in October 1977, he ordered the Central Bureau of Investigation, or the CBI, to arrest Indira on charges of corruption. At 4.45pm, CBI officers arrived at Indira Gandhi's doorstep. She kept them waiting while her son Sanjay mobilized party workers and his wife Maneka Gandhi called the Foreign Press Corps to witness Indira's arrest. In his North Block office, Charan Singh studied the arrest documents and realized that the papers were not in order. He ordered his staff to tell the CBI and police officials who were at Indira Gandhi's residence to return without arresting her, but it was too late. Indira was arrested but released the next day as the courts found the arrest had been made on flimsy grounds. Indira was on the comeback trail and she knew it. In November 1978, she contested a by-election to the Lok Sabha from Chikmangalu in Karnataka. She won by a large margin. But the Janata Party government hadn't given up. In December, Parliament passed a resolution calling for Indira's arrest for obstructing officials investigating the Maruti Car Company. She was sent to jail but released after a week. In an ironic turn of events, 
Charan Singh and Indira Gandhi mended fences and agreed to form a government after Morarji's fall. Charan Singh was sworn in as Prime Minister with the Congress extending support from outside without joining the government. Charan Singh's government collapsed in just three weeks when the Indira-led Congress withdrew support. She had pressed Singh to wind up the special courts set up to try her for the excesses during emergency. Charan Singh refused and resigned. Fresh elections were held in January 1980 and Indira Gandhi romped home with a landslide victory. The Congress won 351 of the 542 seats in the Lok Sabha. On the 14th of January 1980, Indira Gandhi was sworn in as Prime Minister for the fourth time, a politician who never gave up despite the odds.